And we're back with another episode of the Danai Garcia podcast. This time, I'm bringing a great friend of mine, a friend that has always given, without her knowing, <laughs> so many little seeds and tips of how to have a healthy relationship. And yes, I said relationships because it's like really the talk of the day. There's no way that you go to sleep without talking about a relationship that you have with your spouse, with your partner, with, you know, with anybody. Like relationships are really what makes us. And, and I could not wait to bring her here. Emily Wilcox, welcome to here, to our podcast. Emily, so is, yeah, Emily is an author, a relationship coach, and a friend. <laughs> and you trust me, you want to have Emily as a friend. It's, uh, it's great. <laughs> So Emily, I want to start because um, I've read your book, Commitment Phobe, and just, just nobody talks about it. And like, really, people don't talk, people talk about relationships, but they don't talk about types of relationships. Yeah. And you are an expert in commitment phobe, and now you are currently working on your next book, Love Addiction, which is, when you told me, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is the opposite. This is like black and white. Yeah. And they are... The, the extremes are not good, obviously. Yeah. And I'm just so happy that now you're, ex you're explaining the other side of the coin that, that you can fall into without knowing. So yeah. first, I want to start with this quote before we go deeper into relationships. And this is a quote okay. written by you that I absolutely love and really defines what you do for others. Uh, because we're sold this idea of what love is. And you kind of break it down in your books and with your, with your seminars of how to make it real instead of like make it a fantasy, which is what people sell to us. Like I just watched Little yeah. Mermaid and it's like, oh my God, Emily will break this down <laughs> to pieces. But I'm you know, to go see that. I'm but, supposed to see it today with my daughter. Now I'm like, are you really? <laughs> and I'm breaking it down. Like, it, I guess. Oh yeah, you should watch it. But you know. <laughs> But, but once you see it, you will see, oh my God, look what she's done, you know? Uh, the quote is, the modern ideology of love is compelling. Never have we been so scared of the idea of being alone, suffering, and single. Never have we expected more from our intimate relationships, and never have we tolerated more emotional abuse and then in the name of love. Under the weight of so many expectations, the pressures, of our culture make it hard to accept ourselves with or without a man or a partner. I found this brilliant. And I just want everybody to understand where this conversation is going <laughs> and yeah. really take away the, the fears of like relationships. And even that name is so scary, to, like relationships. Oh my God, what is I that? Know. Right, especially for the commitment vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I... Emily, how do you get into this subject, which is obviously not many people talk about that? It's Where does funny that, come that from? not, yeah, well, it, it's funny that not a lot of people talk about it because it makes up like, you know, close to 70 or 80% of relationships. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because by nature, um, you know, we've grown up in a society now where we don't, we didn't have the connectivity of our parents as much as maybe, you know, another generation. Um, had, you know, generations ago, you know, we had busy, 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 busy. We had like the women's live movement. We had parents that were just, you know, not there for us as much. So a lot of us now are dealing with those ramifications and the disconnect as children and the trauma that we endured. And it makes up for a lot of our relationships. So like someone's always chasing and someone's always like, you know, running towards the person back and forth because nobody ever stops to be, well, not nobody, but you know, these people mm -hmm. don't stop to say, okay, we're okay like this. You know, there's a lot of fear in this, mm. you know, it's much easier to be like this and then be like this sometimes and then back to this. And then that's what the push pull oh. relationship is. It's the coming and going and the back and forth. And then sometimes meeting up. And when you do, it's like that passion. And then you, you know, my clients, especially because I deal with a lot of love addicts, which is like love addiction is like, it's like codependency on steroids. Because it's like you literally, that person is your joy. They are your happiness, you know? And so when you're in that passion and those, those, that, 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 that feeling, you know, it's like people just think that that's the thing. That's like what I was seeking. 
And, but then the fear starts in and it's like, oops, oops, you know, and then you end up people going like in and out of this for years. And sometimes years, sometimes the whole marriage, sometimes, sometimes only a few months. Um, but as far as how I got into it, um, you know, I, I grew up with, with, you know, sexual abuse through family, through, through friends of family members, um, abandonment, neglect, bullying. I mean, I was sort of like, I had a lot of stuff going on as a kid. So, um, in my adult life, of course, I had all these traumas, you know, and I had all the, and I was, hadn't dealt with them, you know, I mean, I had drugs and alcohol and all those things. And those were very helpful at the time, you know? Um, but eventually you have to sit and like face that, but I kept creating relationships that were, uh, that, that were just like predisposed to abandon me. You know, like every time I got in something, it was like this, it was like this, you know, it was like, oh my gosh, that's like not a good sign. People think like, we're so passionate. We're meant for each other. It's like, no, that's probably like a sign of like dysfunction is headed your direction. You know oh what I mean? God. You want to have love and you want to have safety and security in those things, but you don't want to have this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I noticed that in my life, I was getting the same relationship over and over and over and over. There was about maybe eight or 10 of them. And it was like the same thing. It was like this, this wow. clockwork of the same, it was the same abandonment. It was the same feeling. It was the same. It was just, and I was never single, which goes <laughs> back to what you were saying earlier about being single. It's like, it was like horrifying for me. I'm like, I can't be single. If I'm single, then people will think I'm not worthy or people will think I'm wow. not good enough. I have to have somebody by my side. See this person, that person likes me. Wow. I'm a good person. You know, I'm, I'm wanted, I'm worthy. And so we do that a lot as, as love addicts. And I finally, I got married to somebody. Um, and this was, I don't know, 20 years ago. And I came home one day and he was gone. And like half my stuff was gone. My bank account was drained. It was like, boom, like there it was. There it was the same thing that kept happening, but now it was like on a bigger scale. Right. You know, I married a commitment folk, which is funny because commitment folks by nature, what they really want is to commit. So people think like, oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. They jump all in. I want this. I want this perfect person. I want this perfect relationship. I want this perfect thing. And then they get scared and they back off. You know, so it's like, it's really the opposite of what a lot of people think it is. So when that happened to me, I remember, I remember like sitting down in the middle of my living room and just like, wow, like this keeps happening to me over and over and over and over and over again. And I walked down to the bookstore over at Hollywood and Vine, remember the Barnes and Noble? Yeah. <laughs> I go and I look through books and I picked out. I couldn't find the book that I needed. I was like, what's wrong with me? Why isn't there a book about what's wrong? Because I knew it was me at that point. Right. And I bought um, Debbie Ford's book, Spiritual Divorce. And I bought a couple of Pia Melody's books. And if anybody who knows love addiction knows Pia Melody because she is um, like the rock star hmm. of it all. But I, um, and then I started, I just started my journey. I was just like, okay, I went to work. I was going to go to school, journal and workshop. And I'm going to go to this and I'm going to go to that. And I'm going to, and I just, and I sunk myself into like Eckhart Tolle and Marion Williamson and Wayne Dyer. And I was just, I'm never, I was like, I'm never going to repeat this again. I'm never going to repeat this. And about three months later, I was sitting um, on my couch and I was making a vision board. You know, you're like, dude, dude, doing the work. Nothing had changed that whole time. Like nothing had changed in those like three months that I was doing the work. I didn't feel better. I didn't feel, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel any change, but I knew that I had to keep going. And I kept visualizing this tunnel, this really dark tunnel. And there was a light at the end of the tunnel. And I just kept my eye on that light. Like anytime I felt hopeless, I was like, that's the light I'm going to look to. That's what I'm going to think about. I wrote down everything I wanted in a man. I wrote down 93 qualities because the first time I wrote down three. 93? 93. 93. <laughs> I know. Oh Listen, my gosh. I know, but if That's we cast, amazing. if we cast a wide net, yes. we're gonna get we're gonna get too many people. We want to we want to cast a small net <laughs> yes. so we can get the one. You know, right. we don't need a thousand people. We need no. one. You one. Know? So that yeah. So that was my mistake the first time is that like, I just want somebody nice and smart and cute. Like that was my list. I'm like, yeah, I'm really good this. So 
So now I had 93 qualities. I knew what I wanted. I would go to bed at night and I would, what I think people, and you know, I've been doing this now for uh, coaching now for over 16 years. And I think what people miss um, that they don't get is the magnet, your magnet to what you want or the person you want or the thing you want or the car you want or the house you want or the life you want is enthusiasm and excitement. That is the magnet. So I went to bed every night and I felt excited, enthusiastic amid my like depression and suicidal ideation and all that <laughs> stuff. And I was like, I'm going to keep an eye on that light and I'm going to keep going. And one day I was sitting and I was doing my um, vision board at my um, little apartment in Hollywood. And as I was like putting my little, I don't know, whatever flower and there's a guy and a girl on a beach, whatever. <laughs> and doing the steps. And then suddenly it was like something happened to my body, to my mind, everything changed in one moment. And I remember looking up from that vision board and I stood up off the couch and I was a different person, completely different person than I was when I sat down on that couch, completely different. Wow. So everything I'd been doing, I knew that I had hit that moment of transformation. I knew that I'd become somebody else because I had spent three months basically building a person. Remember that? Remember the Build-A-Bear workshop for kids? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you really build yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, I want to be this person. I want to be, you know, confident and graceful and integral. And, you know, I wanted all these things and I wanted to be that for myself. I didn't want someone else to come along and be like, well, do you like me? Can you right. give those things to me? So, um, so everything changed in that moment. And I think that people fail sometimes to realize, right now I did, was like the difference between change and transformation. Because transformation, we, we think we like, we tinker away, well, nothing's happening. And then you give up. It's like, keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the hope. Because without hope, mm -hmm. we, have, we have nothing. I mean, once we lose hope, it's, like, it's game over. I mean, right. you can't lose hope. And there's hope for everybody. I'm like, if I can change, if I can now be in a marriage of, of gosh, over 17 years now, you know what I mean? It's than anybody else can. <laughs> if you want, if you want to be married and you're looking for somebody. And if you don't, being single is amazing too, which is funny because when I was single, after I had the day, after I looked up in the vision board and I had the transformation, I felt so good because I had mm. loved myself for the first time in my life. Wow. I didn't, I was 29 years old. I didn't know what it felt like to feel love for myself. And when that I felt That is so it, great. You found it. Like you understand it. what that love for yourself feels before somebody loved you. I could, yeah, there's no way somebody because would come along and love me if I didn't have it. There's right. no way that happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is we attract brilliant. what we are. We attract what we feel. We attract what we believe we deserve. I wasn't going to get anybody to love me any more or less than I loved me. Yeah. Any more. It was going to be equal, equivalent, same, same. Wow. Of whoever was going to come to me. So the person I attracted to me loved me as much as I loved me. And the people I attracted before that loved me as little as I loved me. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. It yeah. All, it, it's all measured by how the connection you have with yourself and your relationship with yourself first. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Emily, Everything's when, attraction. When you talk about commitment folk, like it was interesting what you just said that people think that people that are it's just with uh, their commitment folks, they want to commit, but you think that they want to stay, but they actually want to leave. So why do they want to commit though? Like, how well, does that work? I think that spiritually and biologically, I think we're built to want connection. I think we're built to like feel that need. And I think with men with commit, there's seven different types of commitment folks. Oh. Um, like I go through the seven types in my book. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot, but the main one is the unconscious commitment phobe, which is basically the one that wants to commit. He comes to you, he pursues you. He really wants this relationship. And so you're thinking he wants this, right? Mm -hmm. But once, and Carl Jung talks about the first three months of the relationship is basically you're, you're in this, you know, um, in this mirroring of each other and you're just, it, it just just melt into each other. And it feels like, it's just like a self-indulgent, like it, it's almost all about you. It's really way less about the other person. But by doing that, the commitment phobe eventually feels really enmeshed by the relationship. So he ends up scaring himself in a way. It's not like the love addict did anything, although she could. She can get real needy and attached and like, you know, even by acting aloof and 
everything's fine. Energy is very sensitive. So it's like, oh. you can really sense if somebody's into you more than you're into them, even if you're playing it cool. I mean, I played it. So I was like the coolest cucumber <laughs> on the block. I was like, I'm so cool. Like, this is fine. But like my energy showed like, ah, help me, oh, you know, like wow. I want to be here. So I think that what happens is the commitment phobe changes because they first, they realize the love addict is not the perfect person that he thought she was in the beginning. So um, the perfection is going to fade and he's going to go, okay, well, this isn't meant for me because things have changed, but that's what relationships do. They change, you know? Right. So three months isn't the same as six months. Isn't the same as nine months. Isn't the same as 12 months. But for them, but usually the commitment for love, that love addict, they go about two years. It can go less or more, but you know, there's a typical two year mark where eventually he's going to be like, I got to go. I tried my best, but you're not the person you were in the beginning because nobody's, the nobody's, we can't live in the honeymoon phase. We're like, yay, let's just be in there forever. So the commitment phobe is, is, is unwilling to grow with that relationship, oh. but both of them have intimacy issues and abandonment issues. Both of them have it. But the interesting thing is that the commitment phobe has the, he's conscious of his intimacy issues and the abandonment issues are in his subconscious Whereas the love addict is conscious of her abandonment and her subconscious is her intimacy. So they have, they have the fears in the opposite direction. So they're really a good match until both of their intimacy abandonment issues come up. And a lot of the stuff is from our childhood Childhood. trauma. Yeah. So a lot of it's like the father was absent, you know, Mm -hmm. either emotionally or physically. And the, the commitment feels like the commitment foe feels like I'm not good enough. I'm good. I could end up losing this person. I could end up losing, losing myself. And they're just like, this is not worth it. And then the love addict like follows like, please, I can't be abandoned. This is my worst nightmare. You know? <laughs> and that's yeah. exactly what happens. Exactly. What happens. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's meant to happen. It's like, it's, it's predestined. Wow. <laughs> and when you, when you treat someone that is suffering from commitment foe, uh, like, like if anybody's listening to this right now and realizes, oh my gosh, <laughs> I am in trouble. Yeah. I attracted the wrong things. I realized that this is, I need to walk away, but not as a commitment faux person, but as a healthy person that wants to look for that light, that hope. Yeah. What do you do? Or even the love addict, like whoever is listening to this now and is realizing about it or yeah. anything's make any sense. Yeah. What do you do when you are that person? You do, you do the work, basically. You, you where go, do you, you go to? Yeah, so you go back, go, go back to your childhood and really take a look at where did this begin? Where did I feel? Where did I lose myself? Where did somebody leave me? Where did I feel that abandonment early on in my life? What happened there? And then you uncover that, you know, whether it's with a therapist or a oh, friend okay. or, you know, somebody, whether you journal a lot about it and really, really get into that. And then decide who you want to become now, because you have to be able to give yourself your own happiness. The first, the first line of advice is don't give away your power to somebody else. Because if I make, you know, if I make you the president of my emotions, which is basically what love addiction is, you're the president, I'm the vice president. So I get some of the benefits, but really only dependent on what decisions you make, you know, in your, you know, so to not give your power away because that's what we do. We just give it away, you know, but it's really finding and we go back to this, like, Oh, it's self-love, it's self-love, but it comes back <laughs> to self-love, you know, which is there. We just have to unbury it with all the mm. shit that we, that we put in there through, through not, not even our own fault. It's just the things that happened to us. And then things we did to ourselves because we continue to traumatize ourselves over and over, but, you know, uncovering all of that, releasing all of that, getting rid of that, you know, there's so many healing modalities nowadays mm. where you can get down to things fast. You can get rid of emotions fast, you know, okay. and really get down to who you are and then rebuild who you want to be. Who do I want to be in this world? And then you practice it, mm. practice it, like fake it till you make it, you know, like, <laughs> who do you want to be? And then pretend to be that person. Eventually that's your brain is going to go, oh, we're this person. It's a process of rewiring and neuroplasticity that we can actually begin to do that you know, and then we won't attract those same people anymore. The hard mm-hmm. thing is, is getting those people, the, the love addict usually doesn't want to leave. So mm-hmm. getting, you know, if, if there's anybody listening out there that is super attached to this man and waiting for him to like basically change, basically she's waiting for him to go back to what it was like in the beginning, because now he's changed and he's kind of, 
in and out and not very present. And she's like, but let's go back to the way it was. You know, it's like, well, you can't go, you can't get in your DeLorean and go backwards, you know? So I think the first, the first order is like going within and looking at what happened here because you are, you are valuable and you are worthy of love just by being born. You don't have to do anything or be anything or attempt anything or have a certain career or a certain partner or anything to be worthy of love. It is your birth right. Mm-hmm. And everybody needs to know this is this that's that's the truth. Yeah. That it is your inherent right to be loved and to feel love because that's what we are. Essentially, you know, it's love or it's or it's meaningless. Yeah. It's and it's really what helps us grow. Like yeah. once you feel that there's love protecting you, either self-love or the love you created for you or the one you invented <laughs> for you. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like it, it gives you strength to keep going because I feel like when you were saying, you know, I was alone for three months figure, working this out, it's because there was a part of you, you know, even with all these traumas that understand that it existed. Yeah. At least you're looking for right. that. You knew right. it, it had to be real somewhere. Yeah. And that's part of the hope. Like, that's the hope, too, because you know it's there. You right? know it's so there. The like, everybody you, feel it is there. Right. Right. Like it has to be there because it, because that's who you are. It's like, right. it's who you are. Yeah. So it's like keeping an eye on the light is keeping an eye right here and saying, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get in here. I'm going to get here. That's incredible. And, and having faith. And having faith that is, that it will come to you. Yeah. And allowing it. I mean, people forget to allow after they create like, okay, relax, let go, like let go and let allow those changes to occur. Allow mm-hmm. yourself to become this, this person that you're meant to be like, stop trying so hard. Everyone's like, you know, like white knuckling it, you know, it's like, <laughs> yes. Do you feel yeah. like people are, have this idea of perfection in a relationship? Does that fall somewhere yeah. like perfection in a relationship? It's, it's that, it, it, does that go somewhere into this commitment phobe love addiction that it, things have to be perfect somewhere? I think for sure. Yes, you nailed it. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. It's like I feel like that's two, a trap too, it's right? A trap. It's a total trap because who's perfect? I mean, like, I'm like the least perfect person on the planet. I mean, like <laughs> I think we are, we are full of imperfections literally from the second we were born. We live in a society of like technology and this hustle and bustle. Like we were really meant to live in caves with like a fire with like one word. You know what I mean? It's like, we have all this stuff around us now and we're so <laughs> fucked up you know, (laughs) and that's okay, you know, (laughs) but it's like, we can't expect anybody to be perfect, but there, that is the trap. That is totally the trap is wanting that, wanting that, and wanting that perfect relationship. And we look at like social media, who doesn't have the perfect relationship on social media. I know I do. You know what I mean? Like everybody's got like, look at everybody and no one's relationship is like that. We need to learn to like, I wish everybody would walk around with like a badge on their body that's like their list of traumas their list of <laughs> triggers and then you're like oh then you really know a person you know what i mean like instead yeah. of like this this idle talk like i just like we need to go deep right away like right now let's you know let's do this because that's what's that's where the good stuff is that's where the joy is that's where the joy is yeah, yeah that's that's where the fun is i i, I every yeah. time people think like oh i don't want i, I don't want to show my emotions i don't want to show who i am they think that they're yeah. being cool by doing that but Really, it's boring and it's like putting a filter with like little things that you don't care about. Does it make you feel anything? Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, I, I honestly think that the moment we really open up ourselves to who we are and really have these conversations, it's so liberating. It's, like it's so it's, liberating. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, it's, I, I don't know where that comes from, this filter lifestyle. Well, people, people are really afraid of being vulnerable because vulnerability is, is, is a lot of times seen as a weakness or people think it's a weakness. But when you Why is think- that? Well, because it leaves you, it leaves you open for, well, look at all, look at all of my, look at all my stuff. Is it, are you going to, are you going to abandon me? Are you going to leave me? Because you've seen all of my bad stuff, you know, Hmm. which people can leave people for for seeing the bad stuff. It has happened in in the world, you know, it's not like, but the the right people won't. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. The right ones won't leave. Yeah. It's scary to be vulnerable, but we're all we, all, we might as well stop pretending. Why are we all pretending everything's great? Like everything is not great all the time, you know? And that's okay. It's, it's like, okay. that's normal. Yeah. We need to normalize, you know. Not being okay. Yeah. Or, or not being in an okay situation. Yeah. Emily, in your experience, 
uh, what is a healthy relationship? Like when you find that healthy person that you feel like in the ups and downs of life, which is obviously if you don't have them, they're coming or, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. going to happen. Like, yeah. When do you define, okay, these people manage to have a healthy relationship that is not over the top commitment, phobe, love, like it, there's no extremes. Like, yeah. What is that a healthy well, relationship? The first thing is the point. It's a great question. The first thing is the point of attraction. It's the point at which you meet the person. Where are you in your life with your, with yourself spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and where is this person spiritually, emotionally, and mentally in their life? So at the point at which you meet, both need to be healthy, right? Not perfect at all, mm -hmm. just healthy and the healthy awareness of what they, what their issues might be. And also a healthy dose of self-love and self-worth, you know, yes. really, you know, loving themselves to a point where they can be with somebody. And then maintaining that is, you know, is really about honesty, communication, loyalty, you know, trust, all those things that are really, are really integral to, to a lasting relationship. But, you know, monogamy is interesting because we weren't really meant to be with one person. So I think everybody struggles with this idea of like, well, how do I stay here? Mm -hmm. And, you know, men were built to like plant their seed everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is why men are always looking at, you know, which it's like, it's like a normal thing, right? As long as it's not out of disrespect or something, but it, it really is. Um, it's that's why all relationships have issues because it's like, you're, you're, you're always working with this other person and you're always sort of, um, you know, and then there's bliss and happiness and all those things too. But it, it's, it's, it is like a journey, but you have to have trust. It is like, it is like the number one thing and really trusting this person has your back and trusting that, mm -hmm. um, that they have integrity with you and that they, they care for your heart and that they care, care for your soul. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we're like truly enlightened, which we're, we're all like seeking that, like who doesn't want to be living enlightened in a Buddhist temple and whatever, you know, but if we reach that stage of enlightenment, really, we should be able to have a relationship with a serial killer and be okay, because it shouldn't matter what they do wow. as long as you're okay, because you don't take anything personally anymore at that point, because attachment is the root of all suffering. If we're attached to the outcome, if we're attached to what you do say or be, and that's going to affect me, then mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to falter. I'm going to freak out, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm attached to this outcome here. You know, I'm at a point as much as I, I have an amazing husband, you know, my husband, yes. you know, he's amazing and he's an amazing father, mm -hmm. but I have such conviction in myself and such love for myself that if he left, would it be sad? Yeah, it would be sad, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't lose a thing mm -hmm. in my life. I would lose him, yeah. but I wouldn't lose anything about myself. And that's yes. where we all, we want to be in a relationship where we can, you know, have that. And, and it's not like hard to get there. It just takes some work and some effort and some transformation. <laughs> and, and, the ma and the maintenance of it all, how do yeah. you maintain that? Like throughout your relationship, your marriage, I saw you turn into a beautiful mom. I remember you before and after, and I remember. They said you remember my baby, you remember my baby throwing up on you at a party because you <laughs> I Never. hide it from you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were so good about that. But she threw up on you, and then I heard about it. Like, I heard about it like the other day, and I was like, "I'm doing Denise's podcast," and Steve was like, "Do you remember when Noah threw up on her? You know, eight years ago?" I'm like, "What? It's so embarrassing." And I'm sure I'm sure you were wearing this like really nice outfit. I was. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is like I took her to the bathroom and I cleaned her up first and I remember she was a baby she would not understand what I said I'm like I'm gonna take care of myself and nobody's gonna notice that I was just like holding her and cleaning myself she's just like hardly could keep herself together oh I'm gosh. like <laughs> but I, I saw you the transformation of being you know Emily a coach to Emily mom coach wife and I remember seeing always the same Emily everywhere you oh, know, that's like nice. it's yeah, because some people lose you didn't themselves. See my Gemini sides. You didn't see my <laughs> <laughs> but it because people lose themselves in the journey yeah. of motherhood, yeah. you know, marriage and 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 this relationship you're talking about. It's yeah. it's basically planting yourself so deep that anything that shakes, you're you're there hanging yourself, yeah. your fruits and your whatever is growing inside yeah. you or yeah. outside you, like a child. Yeah. 
you, you know, it's, it's, it's like in the middle of all that transformation in life, like, which I'm sure people are like, you know, growing as we're growing, how do you keep that, those roots in? How, how do you, how do we keep all, ourselves healthy? Like yeah. routines for sure. Like yeah. seminars, like, right. Yeah. How, how is I mean, it, how is it going? With yeah. That? Well, I mean, I think one of the first things is, is, I mean, personal meditation, right. We have to just start our, our thinking, our constant stream of thinking. It's all day long, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I teach my daughter, I'm like, don't believe everything you think because most of the things you're thinking are not true. Oh, you know, wow. and it's like, we think the thoughts that come into our head are true. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really weird because it's like, most of them just aren't, wow. you know, and it's all the ego talking anyway. It's just the ego having like back and forth conversations with itself. So the more we can like be present, the more we can be in walking meditation, which is, you know, well, there's the grass and there's the flower and oh. here's deny. And, you know, just staying mm. in that moment because then all the good stuff comes in. If you're just mm. in that moment and who knows what's going to happen in the future. I mean, we can't, we have to, we have to, we have got to let go of our control of the future. It's like, you know, we're all like, you know, I gotta do this. Not going to have this. I get this done. And we're so, we're getting in our own way, like all day long. And, um, I remember I had this visualization for a few years about being on this, um, talk show and like talking about my book that I had written and, and then like one day I'm with my daughter in the car and I get a call I'm like, Hey, we're calling from the Oprah Winfrey network. And we're wondering if you want to be a guest on the show. And I was like, okay. I mean, I, yeah. I'm like, but I wasn't even thinking about it. I had let it go. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's in the letting go and then allowing things to happen and then not going out and seeking so much, but mm-hmm. trusting that that thing is going to come to you. We're so used to, I got to do, 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 do. Well, what about B, 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 B? Because right. that is, that is, that and the excitement and enthusiasm, you know, yeah. is, is like a great combo. And it makes you feel you're in power. Yeah, because you are. You are in power, regardless by of doing what, other, by doing that, <laughs> by projecting and just letting it be and B, keep B, going B. with your life, you know, creating things. Because I, yeah. I, people, when, when we do these exercises of vision boards, which I also do, yeah. um, it's also a projection of what you want, but there has to come a time that you let it go and let it be. Mm-hmm. Don't attach yourself to the board. Mm-hmm. Like if everything mm-hmm. doesn't happen exactly how you planned it, you're yeah. like, you're like, you're something is wrong with you. You know, right. like, like people don't really yeah. ex- explain the vision board, how it, it works. Right. The whole theory. Right. Yeah. Like people think like, oh, I'm going to make my vision, vision board. And everything that I put out is going to come. It's like, well, it might come in a year, two, three. Yeah. It's in the making. It's yeah. the, 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 the control. Yeah. People yes. have to let go of the how, the how it's going to happen. The universe, God, source, the divine, whatever you want to call it. That's what's in charge of the how, mm. you know, when I made my list of 93 qualities that I wanted in a man and I eventually healed and I wasn't looking for a relationship at all, at <laughs> all. In fact, I remember while I was walking down the street one day, and I don't know if I ever told you a story. I'm walking down the street and my husband, who I didn't know yet, bumped into me and I hit the ground and he helped me up. He's like, oh, you hit sorry. the ground? Yes, he literally the bumped ground. into yes. you. <laughs> and I was like terrified. I'm like, what an asshole. Like this guy just like plowed into me. He's not even looking where he's going. And it turns out he was on the phone with his agent. You know, of course he's like, hey, you know. And um, I was like, what a jerk. This guy just like plowed into me. And, and then I ran into him like three hours later somewhere else. Oh. And he goes, aren't you the, aren't you the woman I, cause he left, he went to go talk to his agent and he left me and you know, helped me up. And then he left. And then he, he's like, didn't I run into earlier today in the street? And I was like, yeah, um, you did. And then he said, um, he said, do you want to, do you want to go out sometime? And I was like, you know, I just got divorced, but if you want to just like hook up, we could do that. Cause I'm coming in that mode right now. I was like, I was so happy to be single. I was like, I don't want a relationship at, which was so unusual for me because I was wow. like, I can be by myself. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. You know? And then, um, and he was like, no, I don't want just to hook up. I will, um, I'll wait until you're ready for a relationship. And I was like, this is weirdo. <laughs> I'm like, all right. And then like, I think it was like six months later, something was like, okay, I was like, I was, I was ready. And then we had a relationship, but um, where was I going with this? Oh, it just, oh, cause he turned out to be all 93 qualities. 
But the point was, I didn't, I wasn't looking for him. I just realized what I wanted, had my excitement, enthusiasm about it. And then I went about my life. And then he hit me on the street. You know what I mean? I I let it go because nothing's going to come to you if you're holding on to it. You know? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the moment you hold on to something or someone or even an idea or a thought, even as abstract as it might sound, it's just you're pushing it away because you're not trusting it, trusting yeah. that it could yeah, happen. Trust goes back to trust. Everything's trust. Yeah. Yes, totally. And, and do you see more uh, love addicts or commitment phobes cases out? Like what, it, what is the one kind of category that you see a lot out there? Like well, universe? so, yeah. So, well, you can't have one without the other. So oh. you can't have a you can't have a commitment phobe if you don't have a love addict to counteract it. Oh my god, but yes. If, and because they both have the same fears, remember the abandonment yeah. and the intimacy, because they both have those, they're both a plethora. I mean, they're both it's a oh. it's a lot because we we a lot, a lot of us have grown up with a trauma. So I don't know, it's, it's an interesting question because I don't think I've ever been asked that. Like, what is more? I mean, some of them morph into you can go from being a love addict to being a commitment phobe. Oh, really? And you go from a commitment boat to being a love addict. Yeah. I was actually teaching a workshop in um, London oh. once and somebody said to me in the, in the workshop, they're like, can you go from being one or the other? And I, I hadn't thought about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can morph into oh the other God. one, you know? Yeah. So that was like, opened my mind some more to that, but, um, but it all comes back to the whole self-love you know what what do you think you you can go from one extreme to the other to keep avoiding confronting trauma is that the reason to keep to keep avoiding pain oh so we're avoiding pain all the time all day long it's all we do we we eat so we avoid we avoid not getting hungry and we drink so we like everything is is i don't want to be in pain it's maybe subconscious for some people it's conscious but it's always there how do we avoid pain so when we're in relationship with somebody else, we're like, well, how can this be the least painful? How can this have the result that is the least painful? You know, how can this feel the least painful? And so we, we kind of go by that as, as, as humans. Oh, wow. I oh, think. so it's to avoid pain. But then, but you're, but you're living in a painful state though. Yeah, you're living in pain anyway. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. you're avoiding oh, the, the deep state the deep pain, but yeah, you're living, you're causing pain too and living yes. pain. Oh my yes. gosh. What an interesting, this is very interesting. You know, and then, you know, do you know who Byron Katie is? Uh-uh. So she, she's an amazing teacher, but she says, you know, who would we be without our story? Because we all have this story, right? And we're attached mm-hmm. to the story of who we are. And really like your name is Denai because your mother named you. Because, you know, and then you built up all these characteristics and personalities throughout your life. And then you became this brilliant mm-hmm. actress. And now you're like trying to change the world. You're doing this podcast, mm-hmm. all these like amazing things. But it's like, that's not who you are, right? That's your story. And I think people get, you know, what, whether positive or negative, we get very attached to our story, you know, and then we bring the story into our relationship. Well, this is who I am. And these are all the things that I am. And it's like, what if you just brought your authentic self in? And just really was with the person and and, and being present with this person. What would that feel like, you know, without your story? So, I mean, how do you know when your mind is then telling you the truth? It's because it feels good and it feels joyful. Right. And you can feel it here. You know what I mean? With all the the lies that we told. But, you know, anyway, it just circles back. But it's like without, without hope, nothing is possible. And without really being present. You know, you're, you're really just doing yourself a disservice if you're not staying in the present moment, you know? Right. Do, yeah. do, do you think that for people to find that, mo- like, you know, when you were left alone in your living room yeah, and you decided something has to change after all the years you spent in pain and attracting the same thing, do you think that we have to hit that bottom to change? <laughs> do we have to? No, no, we don't have to. Yeah, no, right? not at all. No. <laughs> You're smiling. But yeah. You're like, no, 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 no. It would, be, it would be so horrible if everybody had to get to this, like, you know, horrible, painful place to, to, to evoke any kind of 
change or transformation. Let me tell you the, I mean, the, it's true that the quickest way to transformation is through pain. It is the fastest way to transform. So pain is our friend. It is, it is, it is a great teacher. It is a great, uh, it's like a, like, um, uh, what do they call it? Where you jump, it's like an opening that you can Mm -hmm. jump through and you Mm -hmm. can like be in that and you can use that for your transformation. So it is like, it is a really, it's the fastest way, but which is great news for anybody listening who's in pain. (laughs) Um, but it's also, um, there's also other ways, of course. I mean, we can, we can choose to transform. We can choose to become somebody else. We can choose to rewire our brain and change our story and, and the story that we tell ourselves every day. Absolutely. That's good. Yeah. Cause I, that's another thing that I always tell, I, I, I you know, when you watch a movie, it's always about the story of a person that is like hit complete rock bottom. Yeah. And the, the only way forward is going up. And it's like, I, I just don't like thinking that that's life. You know, you have to right. just hit your bottom. You don't have to go all the way down to feel the pain no. of loss and devastation. Right. To like, you'll, just, you'll, you'll get a lot of wake up calls along the way. You'll get a right. lot of taps on the shoulder along the way, which I had tons and I ignored them all. And the reason we ignore them, we ignore them because we don't want to be in pain. We're like, well, I don't want to be in pain if I leave that relationship because I know that's bad for me and I know I need to do something about all this, um, then that's going to be painful. So I'm going to stay here because it's a less painful choice because as humans, we tend to take the less painful route everywhere we go, less pain, less pain. But if we choose in that moment, so yeah, we can transform any time. I love that. Emily, what are you, I know you're writing Love Addict right now. Do, yeah. In your website, you have seminars and you have, places that you talk to, YouTube. I watched your, <laughs> your video with Oprah. <laughs> I loved <laughs> the it. The one that you helped me with, yes, by the way. Yes, the pre, yes. The pre-show help. Yeah. I know. You were and so great. Where can people follow you and follow your journey uh, as a coach? Like, you know, where can we continue this conversation? Um, well, I'm on Twitter. I know I'm not. I'm not on Twitter. I'm on, where am I? I'm so bad with social media. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. So I'm, I'm not out there a lot, but I'm on, I'm on Instagram as ask, uh, ask Emily Wilcox. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, my, my book will probably be another, another one or one and a half years before it's even out. But the commitment phobe, um, is a book I wrote that's on Amazon right now. And it is, it is really written to help the, the, the reader transform. It's, 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 it's basically detailing everything you can, you can do and everything. It really shows you also who the commitment phobe is and who the love addict is and mm-hmm. how you can transform. So I think that's like the, I wrote the book because I got really tired of spending hours with people and friends and going over the same thing. You know, it was just <laughs> like, you know, and sometimes it'd be in my house. I remember being having a big whiteboard in my house and like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is how it, it's like, this is a tiring. And it's like, I'm semi-retired at this point. Like, I don't take new clients. Like, I'm just, I like, I want to, like, I take the, the few that I have and like, I want to like calm myself down and write a book. I don't want to go through all these explanations all the time. Not because I don't care, but because it's, it's I can hit more people <laughs> if there's a book that people can sit and they can like, you know, read. And there's other books that, that in addition to mine or, or instead of mine that are helpful too, which is, the spiritual spiritual divorce that I talked about, and also any of P and Melody's books are amazing mm-hmm. on like um, attachment and attachment disorders and love addiction. She calls it something else, but um, still like really good stuff. And I will, I will definitely will add your book link of the Amazon to the website and everything. So you know, if you feel like somebody has commitment, is you know, in a commitment for relationship or is realize that is you can give it as a gift you know it's like we have to really spread the word and and really have healthy relationships it takes time takes energy but there's hope and 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 we deserve it and we deserve it we deserve it it's our birthright it's the birth it's our birthright yes and (laughs) and and it's and and it's important for our kids for our i mean it's it's there's no way there's no and there's no reason to suffer there's no reason anybody out there should be suffering Yes. Attachment is the root of all suffering. If we can just detach and let go, amazing things can happen. 
to yourself, to our lives and everything. Thank you, Emily, so much. It's this was this is exactly what I thought it would be. Oh, thank it was you. special. It was deep. It was profound. And it was not complex. And I yeah. I want it I, every time I talk to you, every time I, you know, I read the stuff that you put out there, you really put it in a way that is so simple to understand. And it's such a hard subject to even open your mind to it. Because uh, yeah. people make it so complex and it's it's very complex inside of us to manage right. this. Right. I mean, this right. is hard. This is really yeah. hard. Everything that Emily's saying is really hard, by the way. <laughs> but <laughs> But the way that you can break it down and make it, you know, doable for you, it's, it's really the first step, yeah. you know, and that first step is the hope. And then it could be dark, but it's, but it's there. And the light is always there. The light is always there. You always just have there. to trust it and, yeah. and listen to it and, yeah. and tr transformation, it will come. You're already yeah. transforming it by listening. Thank you, Emily. And. I, it's been a pleasure. It's been Thank you. It really was great. Thank you. It was Thank awesome. You so <laughs> it was great. Yes. And I uh, will see you very, very soon. And I can't wait for everybody to...